What is up guys? Jake from One Hive here with our next base breakdown video. And as always, I'm joined by Rex. What's going on, buddy? Not much here, Jake. Just sipping on a little bit of beer, uh, enjoying prepping for the weekend. Cool, man. Cool. Uh, this one's going to be a little different. Uh, the last war we were in, they didn't have like a lot of common bases or ones that you have to worry about that we really need to break down. But something interesting uh, that we thought might might help people out there is to show uh, a Town Hall 10, obviously an early, rushed, creamy, whatever you want to call it, Town Hall 10, and to identify the types that are three-starable by even a Town Hall 9. Uh, so that's what we've got here as a base. You can see down there, black props, uh, three-star this base. So we're going to go over the things to look for uh, when you're scouting out as a Town Hall 9, scouting out Town Hall 10 bases and saying, hey, this one is... Uh, something that's possible to three star. So Rex, go ahead and get it started, man. What do you what do you look for first when you're doing that as a town hall nine? Yeah, so if you're looking to three star as a town hall nine, first you have to think about the army composition that you can use in the camp space that you have. Uh, pretty much the only way as a town hall nine that you can three star a town hall ten is with a hog raid. Um, and as you hog any town hall nine or a town hall eight. Uh, the same elements apply, meaning you have to be able to access the queen, take her out. You have to lure the clan castle, take it out. But the only thing that defers is the inferno towers that make it slightly more tricky. Um, and as a town hall nine to attack a town hall ten, there are, are, are a few things that you can look for, uh, and the two things are uh, one. If both infernos are set to single tower uh, or single um, targeting, so when a town hall nine reaches uh, town hall ten and the inferno towers are building, then most likely you could still target it and hog it, uh, assuming that the base layout is a hoggable base layout, because. When a new Town Hall 10 is developing its Infernos, there's no way for him or her to switch to multi-tower. Right, sort of like when you first get your Expos at Town Hall 9, you can't set them to air until they're actually finished. They're going to be on ground, uh, so there's nothing you can do about that. Same thing with Town Hall 10 and the Inferno Towers. And I would agree with you, uh, if, even if this guy had two, both of his uh, Inferno set to multi, even them being level 1, uh, it would be a much more difficult base for a Town Hall 9. Uh, you know, it can be done, to, it, if the guy has a bad enough base layout, uh, it can be done with like a Go Wee Wee or a Go Wipe, but the Infernos, even at level 1, is such a, a force multiplier for a Town Hall 10 that it's hard. I mean, the guy's base can be, just like this, can be crap, and this is a very difficult uh, Go Wee Wee or Go Wipe because so many compartments and you've got those Infernos to deal with. You have no free spells, uh, so I would agree with you. I think Hogs is the best way to do it. Uh, another thing is the giant bomb locations that we didn't talk about. Uh, this base had been attacked already, and, and Black Props knew that there was no giant bombs even inside the walls of this base whatsoever. Yeah, you're exactly right, Jake. You have to make sure that uh, as a Town Hall 10, they have five available giant bombs. Regardless of those giant bombs uh, being upgraded or not, you only have four spells as a Town Hall 9 to cover all five of those giant bombs. Uh, if there's any double sets, then you can pretty much think that uh, you, you, you either have to path around it, which is really difficult and most likely will take up too many hogs or uh, troops to invest, um, or you have to figure out like your healing spell spaces. Uh, and what I mean by that is most likely if you are attacking a Town Hall 10 as a Town Hall 9, like this base does, it has one multi-targeting Inferno and one single-targeting Inferno. Uh, that means you always have to invest at least one Rage for the multi. Uh, that leaves you three spells, and those are the three healing spells. Right. Uh, if this base were two, two single-targeting uh, Infernos, then you can go uh, kind of squeak by with four heal spells. And uh, if those four heal spells cover all five giant bomb positions, then it's still possible, but it's a little bit more difficult. Yeah, I think that's a good point, and, and it's a very important uh, thing to know if you're a Town Hall 9 trying to hog a Town Hall 10 on the multis. It's important to know what spells to use where. 
the rule of thumb is pretty much this. You rage your hogs into the multi-inferno. You heal them coming out of the multi-inferno. Don't try to heal through it. It doesn't work. Just get the thing dead as fast as humanly possible. And the best way to do that is a bunch of hogs with a rage spell. Yeah, you're, you're right, Jake. The thing is, you have to be able to, like, you have to have some experience on how to place your, your heal spells. Say, uh, for this example, uh, if you were going to rage this multi inferno, you would drop a rage as so, uh, and you don't want the heal to overlap. Uh, you want the heal to be um, a little bit ahead of the rage so that the hogs can, whether it be there or here, as the hogs are coming out of the rage, uh, they are healing. Um, but if you drop, let's switch colors. If you drop a, a heal spell over this rage, then they're not going to be getting the full benefit of the heal. Right. What you're saying is basically the hogs under the rage are going to move so quickly. And even these few, uh, you know, once the Inferno's dead, even these few buildings around it are going to die so quickly. You don't want your heal sitting on top of them. You want to lead them coming out of it because it's going to happen fast uh, once that Inferno goes down. Those hogs are moving on until that rage, uh, you know, they've got a few seconds. When it runs out, they need to be standing in the heels, not running through the heels. Yeah, exactly. So uh, going back to what to look for, uh, let's quickly kind of go over a list. One, the base, uh, we, as we talked about earlier, is both single targeting infernos. Two, even if it's a multi-targeting inferno, if there's one or two, depending on how it's spaced, you can hog it. Uh, but if there is a, uh, a multi-targeting inferno, all the other defenses have to be slightly creamy. And what I mean by that is this guy still has Town Hall 8 cannons. Um, this is not even an upgraded Town Hall 8 uh, structure, Archer Tower. Uh, and same with the Wizard Towers. These are all Town Hall 7. So this, this guy is very creamy. Mm -hmm. uh, even though he has three expos um, and an upgraded mortar, uh, they're not going to do much. Those ones you can actually heal through. If this guy had fully upgraded Town Hall 9 uh, slash Town Hall 10, point defenses, then, then it's going to be a little bit more tricky. Yeah, let's not kid ourselves. Um, a Town Hall 9 going up to 3-star Town Hall 10, it has to be a little bit premium, okay? There's just, uh, if it like you said, even if this guy has all Town Hall 9 defenses, you adding Inferno Towers to a Town Hall 9 makes it, unless it's just a horrible, horrible base, makes it basically impossible for a Town Hall 9 to 3-star. Uh, two star maybe obviously that we see that often, but three star is a whole different game. That's what we're talking about here. Identifying a base that you can uh, step up as a town hall nine and three star, allowing your town hall tens to use their attacks other places. Uh, so that's that's what we're talking about. We got to be honest about it. It's not going to be a very upgraded base when you're looking for it. Yeah, and I agree. The so I'm glad you marked out the jump bomb locations. We did we already discussed that all yeah. five jump bombs in this base can be triggered with the bomb. That means we don't even have to really think about our heal spell. We know we can drop the rage like I did earlier. Uh, drop. So we know we can heal one here, one here, maybe like one here. We can cover the entire area of the base. That way right. all the hogs are healed throughout. Yep. Also, yeah, the, the things that you look for in Town Hall 9 bases, like you touched on earlier, uh, a clan castle that that's lurable. You know, a town hall ten can make it such a such a pain in the ass to lure the clan castle that a town hall nine could never get to it. Uh, that's easily exposed in this base. And then a queen that you can get to. Uh, that level seven, uh, she level seven, I believe, level six, level six queen. Uh, she can cause you trouble with your hogs. Okay, so the, the same sort of rules apply. It's just changing because of the infernal towers. That's the bottom line. You have to know how to handle the Infernal Towers, and you can't have them both set to multi. Even two level one multis is a very difficult hog attack for a Town Hall 9. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the, only, the only case where you can uh, hog, um, and I'm not going to spend too much time into it, but the only case that you can do it is when two multis are uh, relatively close to each other, say here yeah. and here, yeah. uh, and then there are no other defenses around. 
mean, there's a perfect pathway for your hogs to go from multi to multi mm -hmm. within uh, encompassing a rage spell. Right. Yeah. Still makes it, and I agree, it can be done that way. Still makes it, in my eyes, infinitely more difficult than one set to, to single. Because you'll see when we do the replay here, uh, once that uh, that multi's down, even running into the, the single, all he's got is a heal down. I mean, yeah, he loses a few hogs to it, but, you know, maybe two, maybe three hogs to that. Uh, that's it. That's all the this, this single uh, cost him. Yeah, I concur, Jake. Singles can still ruin your rate if they're positioned too far or if there's too many defenses, but a multi will pretty much melt all your hogs. So, okay, when there is a multi tower and a single internal tower, the first thing you have to do is, um, uh, after you dispose of the client castle, after you engage the queen, the first thing you have to do is figure out a funnel into the multi-tower um, inferno. So that's the first thing you're going to take out before anything else. Yeah. Uh, and the way you can do that is just figure out a way to funnel your hogs in. Uh, this one's set really easily because after you hit this archer tower, it'll hit this Tesla and you'll go straight in. Right. Uh, especially if you deploy some hogs this way, they'll funnel right in. I think that's what BP does. Yep. Uh, if this Inferno Tower was a little bit like placed right here, it would still be easy. You can go straight into it. Right. So it really doesn't matter. You just got to find a position of an Inferno Tower that's heavily exposed. Yeah, I, I would agree. I think if he had his Inferno Towers, let's say, right even inside these walls and the mortars where the Inferno Towers were, look how much more difficult it is. Because then once your hogs come in, when they path in, they hit the mortar, they're likely going to go to this air defense and start working their way down. They're, it's almost set up to direct them away from the Infernal Tower. The way he's got it here, just like you illustrated, you can direct them directly to the Infernal Tower uh, rather quickly, especially under a rage spell, because those two low-level uh, uh, Archer Towers and the Tesla are going to go down very quickly. Yeah, I agree. The only other case, if this Archer Queen was not so accessible, if she was somewhere deep inside the core... Uh, even protected by this multi tower, then I would say this base is not is no longer hoggable if this archer queen is right here. Yeah. Because there's no way for your your troops, your especially your um, cleanup crew, your kill squad, whatever you want to call them, there's no way to access that queen without being in infernal range. Right. Yeah. Changes the game completely because uh, your witches, your wizard, whatever you're using as a kill squad to get that queen taken care of is is not going to last any time in the in the fire of that uh, that multi inferno. So I would agree that would make it a lot more difficult. But these are the things that we're talking about looking for when you're scouting out these bases. It's got to be set up uh, poorly for you to be able to do this. Yeah. And one more note uh, on this base layout: what is, makes it really easy is look at these defenses. Look at how there's no spaces in between yep. any of these defenses. So you know spring traps are not here. The only way, only places you know uh, there might be spring traps is maybe within these uh, four blue sections right here yeah. in the core. Um, but even by then, your hogs are already ripping through the base. Right. Yeah, cord spring traps can be trouble, but in, a, in an attack like this where everything's so easy to get to, the lure's so easy to get to, the queen's so easy to get to, you're going to have enough hogs that you should be able to overcome even well-placed spring traps, in my opinion. The time that spring traps can really screw a hog raid is when they don't have enough hogs. You've, you've made it a difficult lure. They, they have to take a lot of troop space for that. You've made the queen well-protected. they got to take more troop space for that. This base has none of those, so the number of hogs that he gets to bring, even if he has some well-placed spring traps, it's sort of irrelevant. Yeah, and to add on to what you were saying, because of the clan castle is so easily, you could just drop a few, a few barbs. You could drop a, a one single giant, um, and get the entire clan castle lure. Yeah. So you're investing minimal amount to doing all the other steps. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I agree. And and you know again, this was a this was a cleanup attack. So we knew where everything was. He knew it was in the clan castle. Um, just. It all lined up, and that's what has to happen for these to be successful. Is everything's got that we're talking about has to sort of all line up. It's not you're not going to see these bases every every war uh, to where a town hall nine's going to be like, okay, I'll three star that town hall ten. Yeah, most likely when you're going to see these trainee bases is when you're you think you're out heavily outmatched, 
Uh, say your clan composition is like five town hall tens and twenty town hall nines, for example, and the other clan has fifteen town hall tens opposed to your five. Right. Um, usually, what you're going to see is not all fifteen of those town hall tens are completely upgraded. I would say maybe five to ten of them are probably going to be preemie right. bases that you can haul. Yep. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, it's going to take some practice. This is not something that you're going to. You're going to look at next war and do it and do it successfully. You're going to screw up uh, trying to get to the Inferno Tower. You're going to screw up with your spell placements. Uh, it's it's a learning attack just like any other. It's not it's not that it seems simple, but it's not the same as a Town Hall Nine, a Town Hall Eight Hog attack. It's just different. I've I've done them myself. I've failed on them. It's just it's a different animal. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you, Jake. Uh... The other nice thing that BP does have is he has extremely high heroes. Yeah. Um, his both his heroes are over level twenty, so that gives you a lot of leeway. Um, and in fact, you almost don't even need a kill squad to kill this queen. You can just send in your bar king and a couple wall breakers to break the wall. Yep. And rage him up, and he'll he'll kill the queen by himself. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree because that that uh, gold cannon, that Tesla. Uh, and you got an archer tower or two that's in range. That's not going to take his his level. I think twenty. I don't know. He's in the twenties. I think uh, it's not going to take the that king out quickly. And I agree that queen's going to jump over that wall for you. All you got to do is get through that one layer. All right. Well, that's. I think that's all that we need to that you need to look out for for taking out a town hall ten, um, yeah. being able to three star it, and that's a town hall nine. Yeah. So if let's, there's anything else that you need to say? Watch no, yeah, let's, let's watch BP do it, then uh, we can make a few comments at the end and wrap it up. We w didn't want to take up a lot of time, we just wanted to, uh, we see this. Uh, it's not it's not every war, but we see this, and, it, and we've even shown replays of Town Hall 9s doing this, uh, and I've never really thought about identifying what what makes it possible. We've, we've shown the replays, you know, awesome attack man, but never broke it down like this. So I think it's a good idea. We'll watch BP go at it um, and see how he does it. Like we talked about, uh, setting off all the, the giant bombs. That's how he starts. He just drops one barbarian. He knows where they're at. Uh, there's nothing. They're not even behind trash buildings. That one he does, uses a wall breaker for, uh, a barb there. He just, you know, a good job setting all that off. And then that one giant, uh, I'm like, uh, I'm like Rex. He probably could have used uh, maybe even three or four uh, just barbarians to lure that. But, you know, he had quite a few archers in there, so the giant might have been the way to go. might have been the cheapest lure he could get. He's just going to drag him over to the corner. This is all normal, uh, normal stuff. In fact, we'll even, well, we won't fast forward. We'll just watch it. Uh, just drags him. He's going to bring him down because he wants it to be, just like always, you want it to be down here near your, uh, near your queen. Now, right there, I'm going to pause this and make a, make a, a quick point here. I don't know if that was intentional or accidental right there, what, what BP did, uh, dropping those barbarians there to lure the, or to trigger the skeleton traps in you guys' uh, cleanup attacks. Now, obviously, in your first attacks, you're not going to know this. In your cleanup attacks, if skeleton traps are lurable, absolutely pre-trigger them, kill them with the clan castle troops. So many times we are seeing raids get screwed by these skeletons. If someone is dumb enough to put them where you can pre-trigger them, it is worth it every time. So incorporate that into your scout when you're watching replays. If those are there, just like what uh, he did there, get them and, and kill them with the camp castle troops. He goes ahead and drops his golem just for distraction. Uh, like you said, Rex probably didn't need the golem there, but he brought it anyways. Uh, just saw what we talked about in the last video. Wall breakers got uh, taken out, uh, didn't get through there. But the clan castle uh, uh, troops are dead. The skellies are dead. Uh, right there, the king is almost going to enter this wall for him uh, with uh, some skeletons backing him up. And already, he knows that's taken care of. That level 6 queen doesn't have a chance. Right there, hogs are coming in. Rage is down. Boom. It's over right here. I mean, it really is. All he has to do is keep his hogs alive now. He starts dropping these hills. Uh, right where we, sort of where we talked about. They're splitting into two groups. That's fine. Uh, they're working their way through the base. Right here, you'll see it. They encounter... This single inferno, it's killed one hog so far. There went the second one, it's killed. Drops a heal. There went the third hog, it's killed. It's targeting on the fourth. Uh, hard to tell there, might have got the fourth hog down, might not have. But that's all that single inferno cost him. Uh, the hogs are 
clearly not the last few defensive buildings. They're going to go up and get this Archer Tower and that Tesla, and that's it. They're going to stop. Uh, he, he saved his queen, which I thought was interesting for the, for the cleanup, essentially. He, he knew that that defensive queen was low enough that uh, he didn't have to worry about that. So he, uh, he, he held on to her just for cleanup on the opposite side, which, which worked out for him. Uh, we'll fast forward a little here as they just work around the base, and it's, uh, it's GG for this uh, Town Hall 10, and an awesome attack showing us how a Town Hall 9 can step up and do it on the right base. Were there any things that you potentially would have done differently than BP or Jake? Yeah, and we, and we mentioned it as the attack was going on. I, I'm like you. I don't think the, the Golem was necessary. That's 30 troops, but that's a lot. Uh, he, and obviously the one other thing is, his wall breakers failed. Uh, you know, I, I wasn't paying enough attention to see it slow, slow enough to see if it was splash damage that got him. I don't think there was any splash damage there, so I think it might have been a spring trap. Uh, so it might have just been bad luck. But probably would have kept the golem at home and just brought a few more, uh, a few more kill troops to assist with that queen and a few more hogs. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, I think it was the spring traps that got the wall breakers. Yeah. The golem is not necessary. It's kind of nice if. You, if the explosives are pointed to ground and the golem runs into the range before the hogs do, yeah. So the golem is just soaking the entire damage of the expos. But other than that, I would not take a golem. Um, when the queen is that heavily exposed, I would take uh, more hogs. The only thing that I would have done differently is if your hogs stay in a single pack, then you're going to run into into some time issues. Uh, you yeah. got lucky enough that the hogs split up into two packs and that he could que uh, deploy the queen at the top side of the map. Yep. Uh, I personally would have started the, the cleanup with the queen if I was going to hold on to her later. I think he saved it because he wanted to make sure that that enemy barbarian team was um, taken out. Yep. But uh, I personally would have deployed the queen behind my hogs because she's protected. She won't even take any damage because my hogs already cleared out the defenses in that area. Um, and the hogs... Wherever they start, that's where they're going to return to last. They're going to finish the other side of the base and start cleaning up over there prior to coming back. Right. I would agree. And that's just old habit for me. Uh, my queen goes down, uh, you know, and then I try to send the hogs in to sort of protect her. Uh, it's sort of a math thing. She's got she's doing damage the whole time. Now, the flip side of that coin is she is awful dumb, and she'll shoot a wall for half of a, of a raid at times. So... I'm like you. I would, too, but maybe it was the right move here. It obviously worked out for him, uh, but I, I know what you're saying. All right, well, that's all I have to say about this attack. Uh, hopefully this video helps others able to uh, three-star Town Hall 10s as a Town Hall 9. Yeah. It's, it's a great feeling, that's for sure. It is. It's, it's a confidence booster. It's, it's just fun. And again, not only that, it frees up a Town Hall 10 attack. I mean, now you've got a Town Hall 10 that can try to three-star maybe another Town Hall 10 or, if need be, go down and clean up a Town Hall 9. So it just it gives you uh, gives you more options in the war. And, again, it is fun. It's good to watch. If you guys, uh, you know, anyone out there has got a Town Hall 10 uh, three-star by a Town Hall 9, hit me up. I'd like to see it. I, I like seeing stuff like this. I'll come over and watch it. Uh, it's something I've been thinking about, you know, doing. So uh, leave a comment. Let us know if you liked it. Uh, until next time, guys, Jake and Rex from One Hive doing our best to help you guys suck less.